What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Blue Collar Bassin. Today we are talking about bank fishing once again. You know I've been out bank fishing quite a bit. I think it's an awesome way if you don't have a lot of time to actually get out on the water and do some fishing, you know, if you have that limited amount of time. So today we're actually going to break down how I go about bank fishing and some of the things and gear that I take out here. That way we can have a good time and also catch some fish. Guys, if you like these kind of videos, go ahead and hit that like button, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and turn on the notification bell, and let's get going with breaking this down. All right, guys, so I have the gear that I'm taking out with me today. So I have this little, little satchel bag. It's like a over-the-shoulder bag, and that's gonna allow me to be able to carry a couple different boxes. I only carried one box today. This is my tube box, but I also have down in here some soft plastics, you know, I carry some TRD, Ned Rig baits, and a couple other things. I think I have a, a scale in here. That way we can measure a fish and also, you know, some pliers and stuff. That way, uh, if a fish were to swallow a hook or something, we can kind of dislodge that and get it out of there without harming the fish too bad. Uh, as far as rods go, today I carried four rods. You do not have to carry this many rods. Some people just carry one rod, but I have found my personal preference. I don't like to tie on new baits all the time. So what I'll do is, you know, right now I'm gonna leave my bag and two rods here, and I'm probably gonna walk on up and, you know, utilize the two rods. And what I'm using today is I have two rods that have Ned rigs tied on, and then I have two rods that have tubes tied on. That way, if we were to break off, we're not gonna have to completely retie all the time. And guys, as far as line goes, I use 20 pound braid to about a 10 pound, 12 pound fluorocarbon leader. Because if you're smallmouth fishing, you're gonna want a fluorocarbon leader. First of all, the line sinks, it's gonna get your bait down real quick. And we're fishing a PB and J Ned rig on this one. And what that fluorocarbon also is gonna allow you to do is if you break off and get it hung up, that weak point is probably gonna be your connection between that braid and fluoro. And you're gonna be able to just break it off, you know, just pull your rod back and snap that line. And what that's gonna allow you to do is only have about six to eight feet of line in the water versus, you know, if you were to have to cut your line that's way out and have 100 feet sticking out in the water okay so you're kind of doing the environment of justice there you're not going to be having everybody else snag their fishing line on your line that you had to break off so i think that's one positive to it so i just have all spinning reels today i feel like if you're fishing this light tackle you kind of need a spinning rod i'm not going to be using my bait casters for this and I literally have the same line on all four of these. 20 pound braid and 10 pound fluorocarbon leader. All right, so like I said, you don't have to carry four rods. Some people just carry two. A lot of times that's what I'll do. Uh, but I didn't want to be getting hung up and have to break off that many times. And this allows me to have some backup. All right, so we talked about the gear that I use. And if you have any questions, hit me up in that comment box and we'll kind of go over that. Uh, but it's kind of basic. Use whatever bait you like to use. For me, when I bank fish, I don't worry about crankbaits. I don't worry about topwaters. I don't worry about jerkbaits. I only worry about working the bottom, okay? That way I can only focus, and this is strictly smallmouth, guys. Largemouth, you could use anything. I would probably throw a Texas rig more than anything else, probably utilizing a crawl or a Senko. All right, but for smallies, I'm using those tubes because that's my confidence bait and also a Ned rig. It's also one of my confidence baits. And I'm just gonna work those pretty slow across the bottom. And that is how I'm going to try to target those smallies. I'm gonna go ahead and shoot an intro in a little bit when it gets a little bit more daylight, but we're gonna go ahead and get started with bank fishing here. And I'm gonna teach you guys kind of what I'm looking for when I'm going out bank fishing. All right, being able to cast. There we go, that's a fish right there. All 
I don't know how good it is. <laughs> good little smiley here. Oh, he got his, he got his lip ripped real good. Alright, he put up a good little fight. A little early morning smallmouth action here. He's a pretty little fish. He's nothing massive. <laughs> okay, when it comes down to location, what do you need to look for to get on those smallies when you're bank fishing? Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is, before I go out, I'm going to look at Google Maps. Especially if you're in a place where you don't know uh, what kind of fish is there, you don't know... You don't really know where you're going, okay? That's what I would do is pull up Google Maps. And what I'm going to be looking for is places of current. So on Google Maps, it would look like a really shallow water and where you can kind of see through. You can see the gravel. You can see the rock. Those are places I'm going to look for. And right here is a perfect place. You have really fast current moving across rocks. And this is where the habitat is going to be. This is where those smallies are going to stack up. They're probably going to be right here. They might not be right in the middle of it. They're going to be right below it, all out in here. And what that is, is all those bait fish are getting washed over those rocks. The smallies are going to be kind of sitting, facing back upstream, waiting on an opportunity for some uh, baits come washing by. Okay, so when you present a Ned rig or a tube, comes bouncing across those rocks down to them, guys, they eat it up all the time, okay? It's gonna be awesome. You guys are be, gonna be getting on those bass a lot. Okay, another reason this is a hot spot for smallies is they love oxygen-rich water, okay? It helps them to survive a lot easier, and, and with that fast water moving across those rocks, it's producing a lot of oxygen in the water. Okay, so that is one reason this is a hot spot for smallmouth. So, so guys, if you've been out there smallie fishing and not targeting areas of current where that oxygen rich water is, guys, go ahead and try that. It's gonna get you on more fish, I promise. See with this bag, I'm able to just kind of throw it across. And I can carry it around. Even with this chest cam on, I can carry it around pretty easily. All right, I'm actually gonna carry all four of these rods with me. I'm gonna move them on down the bank here. And guys, for bank fishing, I don't utilize a standard tube jig or tube insert, whatever you want to call it. I use, if you know from previous bank fishing videos, I use what is called the Goofy Tube Jig Head. And it's made by Bass Pro, but you can also get the VMC Dominator. There's a couple other ones that also utilize this extra wide gap hook. All right, so I'm going to just start throwing this tube out and when I bank fish I want to be able to throw the bait as far as I possibly can so honestly I could probably go down from this 20 pound braid down to you know probably a 15 maybe even a 10 pound braid and still be fine and that would probably allow me to cast a lot further all I'm doing is just fishing this nice and slow now there we go there we go. This is a good one right here. This is a nice one. You got the rod bent all the way over. If this ain't a nice one, he's fighting like he is. Good God, I can't imagine. So this is one of the first ones I've actually caught on this Abu Garcia Vendetta rod. Yeah, that rod was uh, really sensitive. I could feel everything this fish was doing. All right, he's not a big fish. Look at that color, though. He's got a different color to him. All right, let's get this guy back in the water. They're sitting out here. They are here. Man, I thought that was going to be that four-pounder we were looking for. <laughs> All right, so... That's our tube again, and you can see it didn't get tore up any. We're just going to have to reset and 
Texpose this hook again. That way it's weedless. And all I'm doing is kind of just sinking that back up in the body of the tube. That way it doesn't get hung up on anything. All right, I'm gonna break out the Ned rig, see if we can cast this thing a little bit further. And this is what we're working with. Okay, it's just a little Ned rig, weedless style here. So one cool thing about smallmouth is they tend to school up, which means they kind of group together more. Uh, if you know anything about largemouth bass, they're kind of like loners, okay? They're, they're their lone wolf. You know, they're gonna be out there hanging out on rock, hanging out on structure by themselves, okay? Smallmouth, they tend to kind of pair up, group up, and typically, if you can find one, you'll find a little bit more than that. All right, so let's move on down just a little bit further. And then we're going to actually move locations. So when I bank fish, I'm always on the move. I'm always, you know, it's kind of like a running gun type thing. I'm, I'll fish pretty hard. I'll power fish a whole section of bank here. And then I'm off. I'm getting in the truck and I'm going somewhere else. And that's kind of what you have to do sometimes to actually get on a lot of fish. If you're wondering about how I fish this, I'm literally fishing this just like I would a Texas rig, where I'm just literally dragging it really slow across the bottom, that's it. A lot of times I might, you know, take the rod and twitch it a little bit, kind of just pausing, bumping. That's all you have to do. Right, we are down at our last location for the day. We're gonna see if we can fish blow this spillway. Now right now, if you are bank fishing, guys, one thing to keep in mind is snakes. You definitely don't wanna just be prancing around unaware of what you're about to step on. So that's another tip is look out for snakes, look out for anything that might bite you. But I grabbed two rods, I only grabbed the two rods that had tubes tied on i don't want to be worrying about the uh, ned rigs right now they tend to get hung up a lot easier than these tubes do with the limited amount of time i don't want to have to get hung up so so what i'm kind of looking for is just different points of interest here so you can see there's this big eddy so what that is is just an open part that has no current really flowing through it so that's kind of where they'll pull up a lot of times, is right where that fast moving current meets where there's no current. A lot of times they'll sit right there waiting on the bait fish to swim through. And the reason they like that stagnant water sometimes is because it's easier for them to, to stay in it without having to, to swim. So right here is another awesome place because you got, oh, there we go. Oh, he got off. Jeez. I'm trying to break <laughs> trying to break down the, the fishing area here and I didn't get the good hook set on it. There you guys. Also watch out for snakes up in these trees. A lot of times those will be your uh, black rat snakes. Uh, or you'll watch out for the copperheads and the cotton mouse here on the ground. A lot of times those copperheads will be right under logs and stuff like this. So you wanna be careful for that. And the area here that I'm kind of looking at is where it's kind of stagnant water right there. Right behind these rocks is a good place. Right there where I threw it. There we go. I don't know how good this one is. No, he's just a little. We'll take him. See how I had to reel that in pretty much as quick as possible? That's because if you don't, that current will take it. And all these right here have been pretty small. But hey, where those small ones are, there's probably some big ones lurking. At least we hope so. Oh, we got one. <laughs> right in the middle of this really 
thick current. I, I was not expecting it to be in that. And he really choked that tube. All right. It's a little bit better one. Still small. <laughs> little small river smallies. Hey, we'll take it. That's like, what, three or four we caught today in like an hour. Guys, that's proof you can do it. We've only been out here an hour. And we've caught like four fish. You can do it. Hey, look. Five dollar bill, guys. It's all wet. I sat out here all weekend in the rain. All right, guys, as we're walking up out of here, Hope you found this video pretty uh, informative. If you didn't, uh, you know, ask me questions, guys. Hit up that comment box if I didn't talk about something that you thought I should have, or, you know, help out everybody else in this forum, okay? Um, if you did like this video, hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell if you haven't already. And guys, hopefully after this video, you know how to at least target some smallmouth a little bit more effectively and you know have a good baseline of kind of what to look for when target them such as you know going to google maps and looking for things like that uh just kind of locating the current a lot of times I, I like to use that philosophy if you find the current you can find the fish okay once again we're talking about smallmouth here this river that i fish it does have large mouth too about half and half but I have found that, you know, if you're out here fishing specifically for those smallies, you're going to hit the smallies. Okay, just based on the different profile baits that you're throwing and stuff, that's kind of what you're going to get. But guys, during this video, we talked about kind of my setup. I have the backpack. I carry, you know, anywhere from two, possibly four rods, depending on, you know, kind of the conditions I'm fishing. I had Ned rigs. I had tubes. We talked about uh, kind of how to locate them. And we talked about some of the different areas such as, you know, fishing below the rapids and then below, you know, the, where the eddies are and kind of where that current meets the non-current is kind of one of those things you want to look at. So guys, please stay tuned till next time. Hopefully you found this informative. And guys, we'll see you in that next video.